The legendary hero Solid Snake, real name David, was a former soldier, spy, special forces operator, and mercenary. He became known as the man that could make the impossible possible, and his exploits made him a living legend among the special forces. In today's video, we are going to look at his full story. Get comfortable, because this is a long and wild story. The year is 1972. David and his twin brother Eli are born as the result of a government project called Les Enfants Terribles, which was designed to produce the perfect soldier. For this experiment, the genes of the greatest soldier of the 20th century, Big Boss, were used. The twins were also being used as sort of an insurance policy by the Patriots in case Big Boss left their organization. Now, in case you don't know, the Patriots, originally called Cypher, were also known as the Lali Lule Lo, were a secret organization that, by the 90s, were covertly controlling the entire United States of America. Back to Snake. So, the two clones were actually modified on a genetic level. One clone would receive all the positive traits of Big Boss, while the other would receive all his recessive traits. This was in an attempt to ensure that the one soldier was practically perfect. At least, that was the idea. Throughout David's early life, he was raised by a variety of different foster parents before eventually enlisting in the army as a teenager. He was soon inducted into the Green Berets and took part in a mission to infiltrate Iraq in 1991 during the first Gulf War. During the war, a few US soldiers were injected with super soldier genes in an attempt to replicate the Leon von Steribos experiment. In a way, making them David's siblings. Sort of. I think. Soon after, David joined a special forces unit named Foxhound, ran by Big Boss. Here, he received the codename Solid Snake. During his time training with Foxhound, he picked up many skills, including linguistics, combat diving, and free climbing. He also learned CQC, or close quarters combat, from Big Boss himself who also taught him the skills needed to survive on the battlefield. While at Foxhound, he also met his main survival instructor, Master Miller. So on to the first official mission for Foxhound. The year was 1995. He was tasked to infiltrate Outer Heaven, a military nation in South Africa, led by a feared and legendary mercenary. Snake was ordered to rescue Grey Fox, a fellow Foxhound agent who was missing in action. He also had to shed some light on Metal Gear, a weapon that had been dubbed the ultimate weapon by Grey Fox in a broken radio message just before he was captured. After successfully infiltrating the fortress via an underwater insertion, Snake learned from a few prisoners of war that Fox was being held in a high security prison cell in the basement. After eventually locating Fox, he was informed that Metal Gear was essentially a portable nuclear launcher. Scary stuff. He was then told to locate the developer of the weapon, Dr. Drago Petrovich Madna, to find a way to destroy it. With the help of some resistance members, Snake rescued the Doctor and his daughter and destroyed the TX-55 Metal Gear. But just as he was making his escape, Snake discovered that his mission commander and mentor, Big Boss, was actually the leader of Outer Heaven. Snake was then confronted by Big Boss in the basement and they fought. Solid Snake managed to defeat Big Boss and escape the base before it self-destructed. However, the Big Boss that Snake killed was actually the body double Venom Snake, the one you play as in the Metal Gear Solid 5 game. But Snake doesn't know that, so, yes, this is very confusing, bear with me. <laughs> the real Big Boss had actually fled to Central Asia at this point. So, despite being successful in Outer Heaven, Snake decided to leave Foxhound and retire early. He was, however, later recruited by the CIA and spent the next six months as an undercover agent. He soon became dissatisfied with the organization and left to become a mercenary for hire. After earning enough money from doing that, he moved to the Canadian wilderness in a sort of semi-retirement. For the next few years, he suffered with PTSD due to his memories of what happened with Big Boss and Outer Heaven. In December of 1999, Snake was called upon by the newest commander of Foxhound, Roy Campbell, for a mission in Central Asia. I'm sure you can see where this is going. Apparently, a new highly militarized nation called Zanzibar Land had kidnapped a doctor that had invented an oil refining microbe called Oilix. Not only that, but apparently a new Metal Gear was believed to be in development in Zanzibar Land. Snake reluctantly decided to accept the mission, mainly to bring some closure to his nightmares. After successfully infiltrating Zanzibar land, complications arose when one of his mission allies, Holly White, blew her cover and needed rescuing. After rescuing her, Snake was attacked by former comrade Grey Fox. The battle led to Dr. Marv's death, the doctor that had created the previously mentioned Oilix. Despite this, Snake successfully recovered the Oilix formula. Later, deep in Zanzibar land, Snake destroyed Metal Gear D, but 
As the one behind Zanzibar's rise to power, Big Boss revealed himself for one final battle. Now after the heated battle, pun intended, Snake defeated Big Boss with a makeshift flamethrower. You see what I did there? After the battle, Snake and Holly escaped the fortress and were extracted by helicopter. During debrief, Snake declined to permanently rejoin Foxhound, stating that his nightmares were now over. Despite promising to have a Christmas dinner with Holly following the mission, Snake stood her up and disappeared. The Colonel implied that it was not the first time Snake had vanished without warning. Snake had actually retired to an Alaskan wilderness retreat. By this time, the military had deemed that Snake had committed many acts of misconduct during his career, enough that he would have to serve a rather lengthy prison sentence if he were to be discovered. Over the following years, he attempted to forget his battle-heavy past and recover from PTSD. He had to come to terms with essentially killing his own father. It was during this time that he began drinking, heavily. He went on to become a dog sled racer and took care of around 50 huskies. Sounds like a lot of fun if you ask me. In February 2005, Snake was essentially forced back into action once again by former commander Roy Campbell. This time he was sent to deal with an incident at Shadow Moses. Rogue members of Foxhound had taken over Shadow Moses Island and were threatening the US with a nuclear strike unless the remains of Big Boss were handed over to them. Again, Snake reluctantly accepted the mission and had to have his hair cut short to avoid being confused with the terrorist leader, Liquid Snake, who was, of course, the other twin. Spoilers. Snake's mission was to discover the full potential of their nuclear capabilities and rescue hostages Kenneth Baker, President of Arms Tech, and the DARPA chief Donald Anderson. Prior to the mission, he was prepped by genetic engineer Naomi Hunter, who provided him with any vaccinations required. What was that injection for? It's a combination of nanomachines and an anti-freezing peptide so that your blood and other bodily fluids don't freeze. After infiltrating the base alone, Snake quickly gained help from two people who would go on to play very important roles in the remainder of his life. Metal Gear Rex developer Hal Emmerich, also known as Otacon, and new Foxhound recruit Colonel Campbell's niece, Meryl Silverberg. During the mission, Snake was manipulated into activating Metal Gear due to false information provided to him by Liquid Snake, who had infiltrated Snake's support group by posing as Master Miller, who he had had killed three days before. With the help from Meryl and Otacon, and his former comrade Grey Fox, now going as Cyborg Ninja, again confusing, he succeeded in destroying Metal Gear Rex and defeating the members of the rogue Foxhound, Revolver Ocelot, Decoy Octopus, Vulcan Raven, Sniper Wolf and Psychomantis and of course his brother, Liquid Snake. Prior to their final battle, Liquid had taunted Snake with the knowledge that he had killed many of Snake's brothers in the Next Generation Special Forces, who just like the Leon von Terribler, had been experimented on to replicate Big Boss. Snake soon learned that the mission had been a carefully planned plot by the Pentagon. Try saying that three times quickly. Planned plot by the Pentagon, planned plot by the Pentagon, planned plot by the Pentagon. Anyway, remember the genetic engineer Naomi Hunter? Well, when vaccinating Snake, she had actually made him the host of an artificial virus called Fox Dye. It's safe to say that Snake was pretty mad when he found out that his mission was just a government conspiracy and that he was just a carrier of a virus that was actually programmed to kill Baker and Anderson, who apparently knew too much about the project. Snake had also been reminded that it was possible that he actually willingly accepted the mission just because he enjoyed war. This was pointed out to him by Meryl, Psychomantis and Liquid Snake. All the way through the Shadow Moses mission, Snake suspected that Campbell had been hiding important information from him, but forgave him when he discovered that the Pentagon had used his niece Meryl in order to force him to cooperate with them. Snake also discovered that Naomi was the foster sister of Grey Fox, and she had a hidden agenda of revenge against Snake for what he had done to her brother. She had actually modified the Fox Dye virus that she injected him with so that it would kill Snake at some point in the future. So now his body was essentially a ticking time bomb. Following the Shadow Moses incident, Snake and Meryl disappeared and Colonel Campbell faked their deaths in some kind of plane crash stunt. Some time later, Snake lost contact with Meryl. And by this time, thanks to his exploits at Shadow Moses, he was viewed as a hero by the public. This was something that the Patriots were very concerned about. Revolver Ocelot, the only surviving member of Foxhound, reported all events of the Shadow Moses incident to the US President George Sears, for whom he had been acting as a spy for the entire time. Ocelot later sold the plans for Metal Gear Rex to the black market, which led to Snake and his new best buddy Otacon to set up an anti-Metal Gear group called Philanthropy. Philanthropy dedicated themselves to disrupting the development of new Metal Gears around the world. They went on a mix of data collection and sabotage missions, and Otacon would leak any intel found onto the internet. On one of these missions, Snake and Otacon also stole the remains of Liquid Snake's body and kept it in cold storage. 
In 2007, Otacon had received a tip from his sister, Emma Emmerich, or EE, saying that the new Metal Gear was actually being developed by the United States Marine Corps, and was being transported on a marine vessel that was being disguised as an oil tanker. Snake boarded the tanker by jumping off a bridge like an absolute badass. While there, he quickly discovered that the tanker had been taken over by Russians, led by Sergei Galukovich. Soon after, Snake met Olga Galukovich, the daughter of the leader of the Russians. He had a fight with her and went on to win, knocking her out with a tranquilizer gun. Not long after this, Snake found the new Metal Gear and took some photos of it, including pictures of the Marine Corps logo that were printed on it to leak online. However, no one could have predicted what would happen next. Revolver Ocelot turns up, but he is now, apparently, being somehow possessed by the spirit of Liquid Snake, whose arm had been attached to Ocelot's after the cyborg ninja had cut Ocelot's arm off during the Shadow Moses incident. Again, like I warned you, this is a pretty complex story, so stay with me. So next, Liquid Ocelot detonated some Semtex explosives that had been placed around the tanker, sinking the vessel entirely. He managed to escape on the new Metal Gear Ray, and Snake also successfully escaped by basically swimming to the surface of the river, where he was picked up by Otacon in a small boat. They used this as an opportunity to fake Snake's death, using Liquid Snake's body as a decoy, which of course was a pretty flawless plan as they had essentially the same DNA. Now due to photos of Snake taken by a US Army cipher, which is essentially some sort of armed drone, the Patriots managed to frame Snake and philanthropy for the sinking of the tanker, which ruined their reputation in the eyes of the public. But two years later, Snake received intel that another Metal Gear was being developed at an offshore facility named Big Shell. Big Shell was occupied by a group calling themselves the Sons of Liberty. Snake decided he had been in hiding long enough and infiltrated Big Shell. Later in the mission, in an attempt to avoid being recognized, he disguised himself as a member of SEAL Team 10, going by the name Iroquois Pliskin. A not so subtle reference to the character that Solid Snake was originally inspired by, Snake Pliskin from Escape from New York. Now, if you're an MGS fan and you haven't watched it, go and watch it. It's a classic. So not long after Snake had infiltrated Big Shell, Raiden had also arrived. Now, as this is not a video about Raiden, we will summarize this section by basically saying that Snake, or Pliskin as Raiden currently knew him, aided Raiden from afar, taking time to judge whether or not this rookie could really be trusted. Eventually, Snake met his other genetic brother, Solidus Snake. And together with Raiden, they fought Solidus in his Harrier jet on top of a bridge connecting two parts of Big Shell. After this battle, Snake revealed his true identity and mission with Raiden. He also met up with Olga and explained to her that Ocelot had been the one that killed her father on the tanker and that he had been framed. Next, he teamed up with Raiden and Olga to take down Arsenal Gear, which was basically a huge submarine that gave the Patriots access to and control over the military's tactical network giving it full control over the nation's armed forces and nuclear weapon. Snake and Raiden fought their way through Arsenal Gear, but were eventually split up, with Snake being captured and brought to the top of Arsenal Gear. It was here that Ocelot reappeared and revealed his true plans to Snake, Raiden, Solidus and Fortune, a member of the Sons of Liberty. But before killing them all, his arm began to twitch, being taken over once again by Liquid. Liquid revealed that he was the one that had leaked the info about the new Metal Gear in the first place in order to draw Snake out, believing that his presence would be the trigger to releasing him. So Liquid, in Ocelot's body, set off to try and kill the Patriots. Snake gave chase but failed to catch him. He did, however, manage to put a tracking device on the Metal Gear. He later revealed to Raiden that his plan was to track down the Patriots by using the information gathered from deciphering the code used by EE to bring down Arsenal Gear. The data recovered from the file actually told them that all 12 members of the Patriots had been dead for over 100 years. They're already dead. All 12 of them. When did it happen? Well, uh, about 100 years ago. What the hell? However, this turned out to be false information, or as Snake put it, a load of crap. After the Big Shell incident was over, Snake's body started to age rapidly due to him being a clone. There was nothing doctors could do for him. His lifespan was estimated to be around a year at best. Sometime before 2014, the Pentagon had declassified documents relating to Big Boss's career, mainly his exploits in the 1960s. Which reminds me, if you're interested in a similar video to this but about Big Boss, leave a comment down below letting us know. Revealing these documents to the public had just increased the legend and popularity of Big Boss and the CQC techniques that he had helped create were now being taught to the military. Otacon even suggested to Snake that he show them how it's really done, but Snake said that his body now just simply reacts in real situations, calling the new techniques cookie-cutter imitations. 
So in 2014, Snake, now occasionally going by Old Snake due to his accelerated aging, resurfaced for his final mission. Liquid Snake had emerged as the leader of the new Outer Heaven, in control of the five largest private military corporations in the world. PMCs had now taken over the world's armies in terms of firepower, and Liquid was now on the verge of complete world domination. Snake was dispatched to the Middle East to assassinate Liquid and end it once and for all. Something extremely important that needs to be mentioned here is that Snake met a gun launderer named Drebin. Drebin injects Snake with a new type of nanomachine, which will apparently help Snake be compatible with the new Patriot weaponry. Otherwise, he would essentially not be able to use any guns. You're scared of needles or something? What's the shot for? What's wrong? You don't like shots? So Snake eventually successfully makes it to the PMC base that Liquid was using as his headquarters. Once again, this bit gets a little confusing. So, the Sons of the Patriots, later known as Guns of the Patriots, was a battlefield control system operated by the Patriots. It allowed them to monitor and enhance the performance of soldiers in battle by altering nanomachines that had been placed in their bodies. Now, when Snake had arrived at this base to assassinate Liquid, the system was briefly turned off, which led to all soldiers convulsing through a high release of emotions, including Snake himself. Now, this was a part of Liquid's plan to get rid of the system altogether. However, this reaction was unexpected, but it unknowingly resulted in him escaping from Snake's mission to kill him. Later, Snake met with Naomi Hunter in South America. She examined him and gave Snake some pretty bad news, confirming that not only was he aging rapidly because of being a clone, but the aging was also resulted in an acceleration of a new strain of the fox dye virus that he must have received recently. Alright, let's just get this over with meaning that Snake could die at any time within the next six months. Snake concluded that the gun launderer he met in the Middle East called Drebin must have been the one responsible. It also meant that the fox die was mutating and losing its ability to be killed off by specific DNA patterns, which meant that Snake could infect and kill millions of people. Snake then asked Naomi if this could be prevented if he killed himself. She confirmed that the virus dies with its host. He then had a fight with a classic MGS style bad guy, Laughing Octopus, and escaped with Naomi and gun launderer Drebin. They also picked up Raiden, who was now a cyborg ninja. But that's a story for another video. Raiden explained to Snake that he was working with the leader of a small resistance group in Europe, led by Big Mama. So Snake disguised himself as his younger self, using some face camo technology, and went to meet a contact in Europe. However, his cover was almost blown, but luckily, his contact, who just so happens to be Meryl, the same Meryl from MGS1, and she managed to save him. They had a big argument about some of Snake's life choices and parted ways again briefly. Snake then followed a member of the resistance group so he would be led to Big Mama. He then discovered that she was the former spy, Eva, that had known Big Boss. And due to her ties with Big Boss, she was able to explain most of the Patriots' history to Snake. Oh, and she is also basically Snake's mother, having been used as a surrogate mother in the Leon Fonts Terrible project. She also revealed that she had the body of Big Boss in her possession. After some more battles and another boss fight, Snake finds Liquid, who is in the middle of perfecting his master plan. Having taken over the Sons of the Patriot system, he used his unbeatable army to kill every other soldier there. Everyone except for Snake and the members of Rat Patrol, which was Meryl's team. So after discovering that Liquid's plan was to take over the Patriot's AI system by destroying one of its systems called JD and use another system called GW to take it over with the only weapon that was not under the control of the Patriots, which was the railgun that was originally on Metal Gear Rex. This railgun was still on Shadow Moses Island, so Snake followed Liquid there to try and prevent him completing his plans. Here he fought and defeated Vamp, Crying Wolf and Metal Gear Ray that was being piloted by Liquid while Snake himself was in Metal Gear Rex. Despite the victory in the fight, he was unable to kill Liquid or prevent him from getting away with the railgun, which Liquid was equipping to his new recreation of Arsenal Gear called Outer Haven. So Snake, Meryl and Johnny, a member of Rat Patrol and the guy that famously poos himself a lot, infiltrated Outer Haven. Snake defeats the last boss, Screaming Mantis. He also uploads a worm cluster called Fox Alive. You see what they did there? So clever. Which destroyed GW and spread to JD and the rest of the Patriots AIs, eliminating the Patriots control. Now, on top of Outer Haven, Snake confronted his brother, who revealed that he wanted Snake to succeed in uploading the virus all along. 
eliminating the Patriots' control, though he had anticipated a full societal collapse as a result, but this had been averted. They then fought in hand-to-hand -hand combat once more. Eventually, Liquid Ocelot succumbed to the new fox die virus that Snake was carrying in his body. Ocelot's former personality took control once more prior to his death, performing his signature gesture and commenting, You're pretty, You're pretty good, good. You're before pretty dying. Good. Sometime later, Snake was preparing to kill himself to prevent the spread of the virus. He sat in front of the grave of Big Boss with a gun in his mouth, but he was ultimately unable to do so. Then you won't believe who shows up. Big Boss himself. Now, side note, I remember playing this game for the first time when it came out and being absolutely blown away by this twist. Anyway, how did this even happen? Well, remember when I said that Big Mama told Snake that she had the body of Big Boss? Like I said, it was actually the body of Solidus, which she was using to repair the damage done to the real Big Boss's body, using body parts from both Liquid and Solidus's bodies. She was also waiting for the Patriot's AI system to be taken down so that Big Boss could be revived from his nanomachine-induced coma. One last time, so confusing, but so good. Finally, Big Boss explained the entire full story and history of the Patriots to Snake. He also revealed that Ocelot was never actually possessed by Liquid, and that he had undergone hypnotherapy and implanted himself with nanomachines to make himself believe that he was Liquid Snake. This was done in an attempt to fool the Patriots, who, as a computer program, would most likely repeat the same process of sending Snake to eliminate Liquid if they thought he was alive. Big Boss also revealed that when Drebin had injected Snake with the new nanomachines, he had actually also injected him with a new strain of fox dye, one which was programmed to kill Big Mama, Liquid Ocelot, and Big Boss himself. But it had also supplanted the original strain, meaning Snake was no longer a walking biological weapon. Big Boss then died from the exposure to Snake's new fox die, but before passing, he urged Snake to live out the remainder of his days not as Snake, but as a man. Determined to do this, Snake quit smoking and retired with Otacon and lived out the remainder of his days in peace, wanting to live long enough to see the future of the new world that he had helped create. So there we have it, that is the full story of the legendary hero Solid Snake. I have tried to keep it to the main and most important points that actually link to his life, so there may be a lot of details missed out, but hopefully nothing important. Snake was a hero, he really showed any emotion or fear, even in the most extreme circumstances. Because of this, many people perceived him as being cold and uncaring, but he did occasionally show his human side, showing compassion for his allies and sometimes even his fallen enemies. Unlike his clone brothers, Snake never displayed any anger over his origins and accepted who he was. He wanted to save the world and do what he saw as the right thing, which is ultimately what kept bringing him back. Even through his post-traumatic stress and his alcohol issues, that desire to do good always brought him back. We really hope you enjoyed this video, and if there are any more gaming characters that you would like to know the history of, please leave a comment down below and let us know. If you think you'd be interested in more, hitting like and subscribe would really help us out. We're obviously a brand new channel and need all the help we can get. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we will see you next time on Explore.